Hey guys, Aaron here. Today I'm going to be going over how to properly swap over your L83 5.3 liter intake manifold over to the larger 6.2 liter intake manifold and throttle body assembly. We're also going to be going over how to properly install the LT2 intake manifold on your trucker SUV. Um, the LT2 obviously came out in the 2020 mid-engine Corvette. It's a phenomenal intake, has longer runners, a larger plenum. So you guys with modified engines that need a little bit more airflow in the higher RPMs, this is a great swap for you. It's definitely a little bit more involved. There's some wires that we're going to need to extend. There's new belts and a, a new pulley that we're going to need to install. Um, but first, let's go ahead and go over the L86. So here we have the L86 intake manifold and throttle body assembly. It's definitely a great improvement for you guys who uh, have the 5.3 liter. A lot better throttle response and overall engine power with this intake manifold and throttle body upgrade. Now, unfortunately, you cannot swap the 5.3 liter throttle body onto the 6.2. You can't reuse it. Um, the bolt pattern is different. You have to buy the throttle body. Um, the throttle body on the 6.2 is 87 millimeters versus the 80 millimeters on the 5.3 liter. And as far as fitment goes, um, putting this on the 5.3, everything bolts on and fits great. The only thing that you have to worry about is the PCV line um, is a little bit in a different position on the 6.2 liter. So what you could do is purchase the 6.2 liter PCV line and everything bolts on great. You will need the throttle body gasket off of a 6.2 liter. Um, it is a little bit larger than the 5.3, so make sure to pick one of those up. You can reuse your intake manifold gaskets. Since we're working on a high mileage motor, I'm opting just to buy brand new ones. I don't want any trouble with those. A little bit later in this video, we're gonna be going over how to properly remove the old intake and bolt it on. We're gonna be doing the L86 on this truck just because the motor is stock and we don't have any camshafts or anything like that to um, justify the, 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 the LT2. But let's go ahead and go over the LT2. Now on to the LT2. The reason why I'm picking an LT2 intake over the LT1 intake is because it has a lot larger plenum design, um, has longer runners, equal length runners. Um, so the LT1 intake manifold you could definitely use and that's a great in intake manifold upgrade for the trucks. However, the LT2 intake manifold is just far superior. If you look inside um, the plenum here, it is, it is huge. It is definitely a lot taller and uh, lengthier than the LT1 intake manifold. Um, the install for this is a little bit more involved. There's some wires that we're going to have to extend. Um, but for you guys with modified motors or if you have the 6.2 in your truck, this is definitely a great upgrade. Now, as far as bolting this down to the engine, the first thing that you're going to have to do is get rid of these ribs on the back side of the plenum here. Um, you're going to have to take a Dremel and shave them down. Um, all these little ridges right here on the back half will have to go away because they contact the high pressure fuel pump on the 5.3 and the 6.2 truck motors. So once you have that taken care of and the, the motor is bolted down, um, the EVAP location where the, the, the EVAP goes right here, um, is in a different location on the L86 and the 5.3 liter. So you will have to uh, swap that over and extend the wires that go over to that. Um, the map sensor uh, is in a different location as well. It's on the other side of the intake manifold. As you can see, uh, it's right here on the right side of the throttle body and on the L86 and 5.3, it's on the right side. Um, you can extend the wires if you want, but I've had good luck actually delooming the wires and just um, crossing them underneath the intake manifold there. And as you can see, the PCV lines are in a different location. So you'll have to reuse the ends of your PCV line um, and take a heat gun and you can actually melt off the, the the connector and just take some generic PCV hose, um, some flexible hose and, and, and make that work correctly. Another thing that you'll need is you'll need uh, new intake manifold bolts for the LT2. You can go and you can purchase the correct bolts for the LT2. However, in my experience, they're very expensive. You're gonna spend about 150 to $200 just on 10 bolts. But um, a little cheaper way that I found is if you take a Gen 4 truck motor intake manifold bolt, they work just great. They're long enough. 
Um, the LT2 intake manifold bolts are longer than the L86 and L83. As you can see, the provisions here are a lot shorter on the L86 uh, than the LT2. I'll go ahead and throw all the parts for all of these uh, intake manifolds, you know, bolts, throttle bodies, gaskets, everything that you're gonna need. So just make sure to check out the links in the description and uh, pick out which intake manifold that you want. One more thing that you're gonna run into is that the um, intake manifold and throttle body are gonna be in different positions on the L86 versus the LT1 or LT2 intake manifold. The throttle body will come in contact with the serpentine belt. So we'll have to reroute the serpentine belt using a different belt. And we're gonna be adding a pulley onto the alternator bracket. We're gonna need a little washer, a half inch washer to space the pulley out a little bit. I'll go ahead and throw these parts in a link in the description. Um, so if you want, you know, if you want, if you want to go the LT1 or LT2 route, you can. Um, it's just there's gonna be a whole lot more modifications that you're gonna make. But for you guys who are modified, this is a far superior choice. Um, the LT2 intake manifold that is over the L86 or even the LT1 intake manifold. So as far as tuning goes for these swaps, I consider tuning mandatory. There's a lot of people that say if you have the 5.3 and you're just doing the 6.2 intake that you don't need to tune. Um, I, I, I do not believe in that at all. Um, I use HP tuner software, the, the HP tuners editor and scanner uh, to tune with these trucks and these cars. Um, also a wide band as well to check your air fuel ratio once you're all done. If you have a modified engine, um, absolutely, you're definitely gonna need a tune. You're gonna have to monitor knock because you will be running a little bit leaner with the increased airflow that these engines will be getting. And at the conclusion of this video, I'll be going over some parameters we'll need to be changing in our stock tune file um, using HP Tuners Editor. There's also some intake manifold values that we're going to change as well. And then before we even fire up the vehicle, we'll need to do a relearn procedure for the throttle body using HP Tuners. If you have a bi-directional scanner, you can do that same throttle body relearn. So with all that said, let's go ahead and go over the correct procedure to remove the 5.3 intake manifold and swap over the L86 intake manifold and throttle body assembly. So with the intake tube off, the next thing that we need to worry about is the wiring. We have a large loom of wires that run along the driver's side and a smaller loom that runs along the passenger side. We need to disconnect the, in, uh, the ignition coils. Then we can uh, spread the wires out a little bit and worry about the loom that connects to the intake manifold cover after that. We could actually take our map sensor and remove the 10 millimeter bolt and just kind of swing it out of the way. Next, we need to disconnect our EVAP line. Next, we need to remove our PCV line. If you reach your hand down and kind of push up on the gray part of the connector, it will pop out. Okay, next we need to separate the wire loom from the intake manifold cover here. There's four different places where the intake is connected to the wire loom. Using our plastic removal tool, our metal plastic removal tool that is, we're gonna pry those plastic rivets off. It can be very difficult if you've never done it before. Um, I've done it a few times, so I know where these exactly are. If you are struggling, you can remove all 10 intake manifold bolts and lift the intake manifold up very gently and slide it forward a couple inches. That'll give you a little bit more room, um, but I've done it a, a few times. I really don't like doing that because if you have debris, um, you know, lifting up the intake manifold bolts will expose the intake runners um, you know, in the, the, the cylinder head. So I don't, I don't like doing that, but, um, that's the next thing we need to do in order to get this thing off. So after our wires have been separated from the intake manifold cover, it's time to loosen all 10 bolts that hold the intake manifold onto the cylinder head. I'm going to be using a little three inch extension with my 10 millimeter socket.
So now that we have the intake manifold and throttle body from the 5.3 off and on the table, here's a little bit better look of the um, places where the wire loom attaches. There's one on the passenger side, one on the middle, and then two on the driver's side here. The driver's side lowest is uh, pretty difficult to remove. So comparing the 5.3 to the uh, 6.2, you can see that the 6.2 is notably larger. The next thing we need to do is take all of our bolts out and swap them over to our 6.2 liter intake manifold. Next, we need to remove all four bolts of the throttle body and we need to reuse these bolts on the 6.2. Now, if you want, this is the time to go ahead and reuse your intake manifold gaskets. I'm gonna be using new ones, um, but they are the same size, so if you wanna swap them over, you can. Now that we got everything swapped over to our new intake manifold, it's time to go ahead and throw it on the truck. All right, so now that we have the intake manifold on, we're gonna go ahead and get the bolts just finger tight. Then we're gonna go ahead and torque them down to spec. All right, so now it's time to torque down these bolts to spec. What we're gonna do first is make one pass of 44 inch pounds. Inch pounds, not foot pounds. If you torque these down to 44 foot pounds, you'll probably snap off the bolt. I got my inch pound wrench set up here to 44. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start in the middle on each side. We're gonna torque those bolts down and then we're gonna kind of crisscross and work our way out toward the outer ends of the intake manifold. Once we've done the first pass, we're gonna do a second pass of 88 88 inch pounds after that same thing work yourself in the middle and then we're going to work our, our ways out towards the end of the intake manifold crisscrossing each bolt so now that's complete let's go ahead and remove our original pcv valve here and we're going to install our new one for our 6.2 intake So with the 6.2 intake and throttle body, we have plenty of room for our serpentine belt. There's no clearance issues, but with the LT1 and LT2 intake manifold and throttle body assembly, you're gonna have some clearance issues like we discussed earlier. Go ahead, remove your belt. You're gonna remove this lower um, or this side um, mounting bolt for the alternator bracket. Uh, you're gonna install a half inch washer and then you're gonna install your new pulley and you're gonna route your belt underneath the pulley and that will take this whole serpentine belt and it'll drop it a few inches will give you enough room for your throttle body and intake tube to match up but of course since we have the 6.2 liter intake uh, truck intake here we don't have to worry about that so now that we have everything hooked up and bolted on it's time to go ahead and install your intake back on i really do recommend purchasing a 6.2 liter intake because the throttle body is a little bit larger you can make the 5.3 intakes work it just takes a little bit more work and it's kind of a chore um, but if you have the ability to purchase the 6.2 intake i would uh, i would recommend it just because it makes it a lot easier Okay, once we have everything bolted onto the motor, before we start the vehicle, we need to edit the stock tune file. I'm using HB Tuner's vSIM editor software, um, and once we have the tune file in front of us, we're going to go to Engine, Airflow, then you're going to go to Electronic Throttle, and we're going to change the value in the max area right here. Um, with the stock L83, we had a value of 3,690. Since we put on the L86 intake and throttle body, uh, the 87 millimeter throttle body, we're gonna change that over to 4,118. 
Now, the LT1 and LT2 throttle body is the exact same size as the L86, but for some reason, the values in this table for those vehicles are different. I don't know why. Maybe it has to do with the intake manifolds being different. Um, the kind of car that those motors are in, I'm not sure. But if we did the LT1 intake manifold and throttle body, we're going to change the value to 4,703.9. If you went with a larger throttle body, like a 95 millimeter throttle body that came in the 2019 ZR1 Corvette uh, with the LT5, your value is going to be 5,054. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the information or the value for the LT2 intake manifold and throttle body uh, that came out in the 2020 Corvette. Um, I don't have any files to reference and look up what that number is if you do post it down in the comments so we can see what it is so let's go ahead and put down 4118 and we are going to save that and load this file into the vehicle so once the file is uploaded into the vehicle there's one more thing we need to do before we fire the vehicle up and that's to do an idle relearn procedure what's nice about hp tuners is that in their vcm scanner we have a way to do that we need to connect to the vehicle, which we already are. Go down to Controls and Special Functions. From here, we can go to Engine, Airflow, and then we need to click the Throttle Cleaned button, and that will do a idle relearn. So once that's done, you can go ahead and fire the vehicle up, see how the engine runs, and continue with any tuning that you need to do. And that pretty much concludes this video. I hope this video has helped you out. Make sure to check out the links in the description for the parts and tools I used during this video. Thanks again as always, guys, and see you next time.